This is Blackmagic Design's Cloud Store Mini, their entry-level cloud-based network media drive, sporting 8 terabytes of fast storage and coming in at just under 3 grand. And this is its little brother, the CloudPod, which gives you some of the same capabilities but comes with no storage on board, but instead has two USB-C connections so you can provide your own external storage coming in at a mere 395. So which of these suits your application best, and what else do you need to know before deciding to buy one? I already did a short review on Post Magazine last month on this, but honestly, I didn't have enough space to say what I really wanted to say about them, and here I feel like I can be a little more candid. First off, I love the idea of self-hosted cloud storage. I love the idea of anything that makes re remote collaboration easier, and this offers both. But if I'm honest, it can get a little confusing, even if you are tech savvy. So I'll let you know what my experience was with these, and although I was primarily using it as a NAS replacement with cloud capabilities. Not everyone who might be interested in this is necessarily going to have a 10 gigabit ethernet network. And although these support it, hopefully this will clear up some questions you might have on that topic. So let's start there. Do you need 10 gigabit ethernet and can you even get 10 gigabit ethernet performance out of these? Now, if you have a newer Mac, you probably already have 10 gigabit ethernet. But if you're using a notebook that only has USB 3, right now 10 gigabit ethernet isn't even available. And although you can get uh, 10 gigabit ethernet adapters for Thunderbolt 3 and uh, PCI adapters, um, and while technically USB 3.1 and 3.2 are capable of 10 gigabit, there aren't any adapters out there right now that support anything more than 5 gigabit ethernet. But that may not even really be an issue depending on a number of factors. In other words, you may not need 10 gigabit ethernet depending on your application. For example, if you're running Red 8K at max data rate of 300 megabytes per second, you could technically handle four streams simultaneously over 10 gigabit ethernet. But if you're using Blackmagic's 12K at Q0, which is the best constant quality compressed, you'll be pushing it with even one stream. For lesser data rates and resolutions, however, you can probably get away with 5 gigabit Ethernet. For cloud applications, realistically, your choke point is going to be your internet service provider. So these speeds really don't matter, both because you are very unlikely to have greater than 5 gigabit service, and you may only be uploading proxy files anyway. But for local NAS solutions, this is more critical. So this would be a good point to break down the capabilities and differences between these two products. There are a couple of critical feature differences between the Cloud Store Mini and the Cloud Pod besides the 8 terabytes of storage on the Mini. First is that the Cloud Pod has only one 10 gigabit Ethernet port, while the Mini has one 10 gigabit Ethernet port, one 1 gigabit Ethernet port, and an Ethernet over USB port which is basically a USB to Ethernet adapter built in, which allows you to connect directly to one device without an Ethernet adapter at max USB 3.0 speeds of 5 gigabits per second, which you might use in a situation where you may have a 1 gigabit port on your machine, or as in the case of a lot of newer computers where there isn't an Ethernet port at all only USB. So this functionality is pretty cool and gives you a simple solution for your main machine to have a fast connection even if you haven't yet upgraded your local network or if you're on location and you don't have an easy way to set up a 10 gigabit ethernet network. You still get fast access to your drive through USB and additionally you still have a fast 10 gigabit ethernet port along with a 1 gigabit port uh, that you, you can connect to other devices uh, or slower network devices. On the other hand, the CloudPod has two USB-C ports allowing you to attach two drives, which can be used by DITs for backing up media cards or cloning, but you're still limited by that USB 3.05 gigabit per second port, maxing out at around 500 megabytes per second. But half a gigabyte a second is still pretty fast for most applications, but transferring a 512 gigabyte drive will probably still take you 15 to 20 minutes, and larger drives like two terabyte drives will take a bit over an hour, but that's still not unreasonable for that amount of data, but it's still twice as long as it would take if you were going over a 10 gigabit per second connection to the Cloud Store Mini. As far as cloud workflow, it has features that act basically like watched folders where you can have it auto transcode and only share over the cloud the folders you want shared. So that is a cool semi-automated feature, but keep in mind that you'll need to pair it with a hefty cloud service too but setting it up to work with Dropbox was pretty painless, and now it supports other uh, services as well. So which one would I get? That depends. The budget cloud pod is a reasonably priced 10 gigabit NAS solution supporting two drives, which is nice and still has the cloud capabilities and the nice HDMI monitoring output. Where it is more restrictive is that its only connectivity option is through the 10 gigabit ethernet port, which is fine for a conventional setup and is backwards compatible if you have a slower network. Also, since the drives are restricted to five gigabits per second, you are only really taking advantage of half of that 10 gigabit ethernet bandwidth unless you're reading or writing from both drives simultaneously. 
So if I was looking for a two-drive NAS where I provided the media, this is a no-brainer since it is competitively priced and has great features and cloud support, like I said, with the one limitation of being that five gigabit per second speed limitation. That being said, you get some really nice capabilities with the Cloud Store Mini, most notably the eight terabytes of fast M.2 NVMe storage and the multiple connection capabilities. I like the fact that you can still access the drive over USB but as Ethernet via USB, so it still shows up as a network attached drive. This provides a fast connection of five gigabits per second over USB 3, while still leaving the 10 gigabit Ethernet open for network connections. So even someone who hasn't committed to upgrading their whole network may be able to use it to say, connect directly to their notebook, which they may be using for filming like I do, connect it via the USB, and then have the 10 gigabit Ethernet connected directly to their main editing computer. Uh, then they'd still have the one gigabit port uh, available to connect up to their slower network for non-editing applications. In this setup, the only requirement is that the main desktop computer have a 10 gigabit card, which could require no additional investment if the computer already has a 10 gigabit port, or they may have to invest $100 into a 10 gigabit Ethernet PCI card, or $50 if they have to settle for a 5 gigabit Ethernet USB adapter, uh, say for a notebook which only has USB ports available, or if you're going the Thunderbolt 3 route, I think the cheapest option is $160 or so. I also really like the HDMI monitoring output, which allows you to see what is happening visually. I only wish this display was also available over the network so I could see it anywhere. Now, I realize I didn't talk much about the cloud portion of this, and that's because that really wasn't how I was using it. Um, and I think a lot of people who buy these are going to be buying them as uh, NAS solutions with uh, the cloud capabilities more for future applications. And so... To me, I thought it was more important that I cover something that I hadn't really seen covered, and that's the connectivity aspect. What is this U this uh, Ethernet over USB? What does it mean speed-wise? Are we limited to uh, 5 gigabits per second on the USB ports on the cloud pod? Um, and that sort of thing. Now, since I had both of them here, I wondered, is there a possibility that I might want both of these working in conjunction because of they, I like features of both of them, and maybe they could uh, benefit each other? And so I actually try to set up which is weird, but you know, I, I tried to set up where I ran the Cloud Pod through its 10 gigabit Ethernet into the 10 gigabit Ethernet port on the Cloud Store Mini. And then I hooked the Cloud Store Mini up to my computer through the USB Ethernet um, connection so that I had the 5 gigabit, uh, thinking that maybe I could actually have these two communicate directly and this would allow us to connect up without any additional hardware uh, through USB, this one through this to the computer. The problem is uh, in that setup, it only recognized this one because this doesn't have uh, a DHCP server in it, so it wasn't able to provide a, a IP address for this drive. So then I hooked up the one gigabit Ethernet port to my regular network, so we had DHCP server that would then send that data out to here, and then I was able to see both drives on the network. I thought, well, that's fine. As long as it, got, it has the data, maybe it can still communicate back and forth directly between them. So then I tried uh, copying data from one of these drives to the other, thinking that maybe they'll go through that connection directly between them at full speed, um, and or at least uh, where it has to loop back through the computer, which would be at the 5 gigabit uh, USB speed, at least it'd be a lot faster than over that 1 gigabit port. But I did not get that performance. In fact, I, it, was, it was not impressive at all. Um, it, I think it was actually sending out through the one gigabit to communicate with the computer. Uh, so it, that didn't work the way I was hoping. But, you know, it was wor worth a try. Uh, that would be cool to be able to have uh, on, on location, for example, to be able to hook this to this and then the computer maybe make it backup copies of everything and have that five gigabit without having to have an uh, Ethernet set up at all. But it didn't work that way. But it was worth a try, I thought. So that's my take on these drives. I think they definitely have a lot of potential. I think the cloud stuff, it could be really cool. And I think even just as NAS drives, they're pretty impressive. So I think, and Blackmagic keeps developing them further and uh, improving the software. So I think these are going to be a really cool option. And I think they're worth the investment at this point. So I know this is kind of a non-traditional review, but I tried to focus on some of the things that I don't think were covered by other reviews and that actually affect how these will actually work into your workflow and what things you're have to modify to your system to be able to take full advantage of these drives. So I hope you found something useful from this. If you liked this video and found it useful, then I would ask you to consider liking and subscribing or even sharing it across your social media platforms. And definitely consider checking out our website, cinematechnica.com, where we have written reviews uh, on a lot more stuff than we actually make videos on. And we have forums and some how-to stuff and some other cool stuff there. Uh, additionally, we'll be give doing some giveaways and that sort of thing. So if you get signed up for our mailing list, then that'll enter you into those as well.